wstore.sk sent me this bizarre AMD key to be the AMD 4700S SBC or single board computer. Let's take it out of the box and see how it looks like. As you can see, there are no questions about packaging from wstore.sk, everything packed very safe and I don't have any complaints. Okay, so here it is. It's a mini ITX key to be the AMD 4700S CPU on board. For those of you who don't know, this CPU is a kind of disabled chip from PS5. It does not have iGPU and it does not have a Ryzen naming. What is more bizarre is that it has very limited PCI Express capability and this motherboard could have been very interesting for the price and for the performance, but, 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 this PCI Express X16 slot is actually only PCI Express X8 2.0. I'm not sure if it's X8 or X4, over here I can see connectors for about I don't know, this looks like a half to me, so it's supposed to be X8 and an X4 is like this, I think. But I will have to check that. So, additionally to that, we also do not have M.2 slot for NVMe drives, because again, for NVMe drives, we need PCI Express lanes. Because of this huge limitation and because it does not have iGPU, it is very hard to use this combo for gaming, but maybe, just maybe, I will figure out what we can use it for. Even though the connectivity is kinda limited here, we still have two SATA ports, which is not too bad, and on the rear side we have four USB Type 3, which are um, 5 gigabits per second, I believe, and maybe one of them is even 10 gigabits per second. And then we have 4 USB Type 2, and we have gigabit Ethernet. It would be awesome if this would be 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, but with these fast USB ports, we can add USB to Ethernet adapters, which could make this to be some sort of a NAS device if we add SATA expansion card into this PC Express slot. I have also heard that this fan is ridiculously noisy, so you could install over here a standard AMD stock fan from an AMD stock cooler, or you could print a 3D adapter to install a normal fan. So that's about it, what we can see on the motherboard. Let's take a look at this manual, what we have in the manual. The manual says only PCI Express slot, so it doesn't specify if it's X8 or X4. And here we can see that indeed we have one USB uh, 3.2 Gen 1 5 gigabits per second and the other three uh, the other three are 10 gigabits per second. So absolutely we can install here uh, air two and a half gigabit Ethernet. And the network is indeed only one gigabit Ethernet. The other specification is pretty boring. We have the front panel header, the USB header, the TPM header, which is interesting. I will see what we can install here unless we already have a firmware TPM so we can install Windows 11. Then we have audio jack. And what is this? JSP1. Maybe we can install a TPM module over here as well. For audio codec, we have ALC897. The Ethernet is A6AX88179. And for RAM, we have 16 gigs of GDDR6 or 8 gigs of GDDR6. I'm not sure if this one has 16 or 8 gigs. I hope this one is 16 gigs, but since this is GDDR and not DDR memory, it means that the bandwidth will be much higher than standard DDR, at the same time the latency will be much worse, so again, not ideal for gaming. Before I wrap up this short overview, let's take a look at the backside of the motherboard, and here we can see this gigantic backplate 
probably we have memory chips on the back side. Yes, indeed, the memory chips are over there, so they are cooled down with this back plate. Uh, and that's about everything I can tell about this tiny, very nice looking, but also very questionable motherboard before I run some tests, do power consumption measures and see if we can actually use it for something rather than a collector's piece. It is also worth mentioning that WStore.sk sells these 4700S combos with an IO shield. Somehow first I missed it in the box, but the IO shield is there and you have it together with the motherboard. With this, see you on my main channel where the detailed review of this bizarre AMD 4700S SBC will be available.